Welcome to yet another edition of Argo Sports Insider. I'm your host, Will Kennedy, and this is the home for UWF Athletics. We're going to jump into all the fantastic things that are going on with our Argo teams and get to know our student athletes, coaches, and staff, and hopefully we'll have a little fun while we're at it. Let's get things started on the diamond where both the baseball and softball teams had big weekends on the road. UWF baseball made the trip to Rome, Georgia to take on Shorter and the Argos swept their series with the Hawks. The Bats busted out in a big way, putting up 29 runs across those three games. Pitchers Dalton Neuschwander and Cade Manderscheid both sparkled in a Friday doubleheader with Dalton going nine innings in the game one win and Cade a strong seven in the nightcap. UWF won a shootout on Saturday behind big performances at the plate from Trent Jeffcoat and Darian McDowell. You know, we had a great weekend, obviously, um, going up to Shorter and taking all three games. Anytime you can do that in conference, on the road, sweeping, very gritty Shorter team that uh, probably down a little bit with some injuries and stuff, as a lot of us have been. Um, but, you know, this team has gone through a struggle the last two weeks, really, and uh, didn't fare well against Columbus State in two very close ball games. This team has kind of shot itself in the foot. Um, it's got all the ingredients uh, to have a good team. Uh, we just got to figure out the right recipe and, and, and cook with it on a consistent basis. We've been doing a lot of that where, you know, you see and you look at our statistics, it's all doing, you know, fairly well that would reflect a better record. And so in that lies where we've got to get better at, you know, taking advantage and capitalizing on runners in scoring position less than two outs. Obviously, any good team that wins is going to hit with two outs. And that's what we did really good this weekend at Shorter. And uh, these guys have held strong. The great thing about it is, you know, they're still all in it together. And we've talked about that. And I believe that's what's going to help us get through all the adversity that we faced. And uh, we've got our best teams in front of us. Uh, so we control our fate and we've just got to keep playing well and consistent baseball. You know, they all want to hit and, and they've been, you know, doing a really good job of separating that and going out and holding their pride on the defensive end. The pitching, the starting pitching has been good. We've had a couple bumps there, you know, and that's what you got to do. I mean, we've had a lot of opportunities where we walk people and things and then didn't come up with a big hit. So they've responded. We've got to continue doing that. This is our first week not having midweeks here in the last couple. So it's a great week for us to get our bodies back healthy again. You know, you kind of like playing a lot though when you get things going in the right direction. We're going to have to do some simulated this week, but we've got a great Montevallo team coming in that's playing very well. And they got all their guys back from last year and they put it on us pretty good last year at their place. So uh, we got to get ready for them to come in here and, you know, represent. The teams we beat earlier, two of them, uh, uh, three in the top, you know, 25. Of course, Montevallo is in the top five. Rollins that we took two from is in the top 10. Uh, Florida Southern still ranked very high. Florida Tech is having a good year. So we showed we could play with very good teams. Played well on the road early, so so forth and so on. But, you know, we've got to find that confidence again consistently. And that's what we've talked about, that, you know, we, we faced all that kind of stuff and shouldn't have to worry about, you know, whether we're good enough. It's whether we can go out there and focus and really lock in for all 27 outs of a ball game. The Argos improved to 16 and 13 on the season. They are now 8 and 7 in GSC play with that sweep. The boys are back at home this weekend for a series at the Spoon with Montevallo. Softball was also in Gulf South Conference action in the Peach State last weekend. The Argos put together a solid effort, both pitching and hitting, in a series sweep of the Shorter Hawks. Freshman Hannah Harper put on a show on Saturday going 5 of 8 from the plate in a pair of UWF victories. Montana Young got the complete game victory to start the doubleheader. Jaya Prasad tossed seven solid innings to get the win in game two. Harper was just as good, if not better, on Sunday. Hannah going 4 for 4 in a 15-2 victory. Hannah's weekend exploits earn her the GSC Freshman of the Week honors. It felt good, it was rewarding. We really just strung together our hits, scored a lot of runs early in the game. The biggest thing is our energy. We just want to keep it up and stay on the same level. I just, I, I like to trust myself and remember that I know the basics and the fundamentals and just stick to it in the game. 
I think the girls just coming together like Hannah just talked about and um, stringing their hits together. You know, we've gotten a lot of hits in games. We just haven't put them back to back and uh, scoring runs. You know, Kelsey Hodges and Chelsea Dumas are really hot right now and moving them up in the lineup has really helped us. And so I think just kind of finding our lineup that's working right now, I'm really excited to go to Spring Hill and see if we can continue to do this. Again, it's all about our mindset, our confidence and mindset right now. I've told people and I told our team over and over the talents there right it's just if we can build that confidence within um, ourselves um, and have the right mindset going into each game knowing every pitch matters um, if you're hitting or if you're on the mound and so just really focusing on um, small goals for our pitchers instead of the big picture uh, really helped them this weekend they're right in the middle of the pack just like us and their team you know I was watching them the other night they're just as good as anybody else. It's whoever's game and whoever shows up. So I think if we can keep building that confidence throughout this week, going into this weekend, it's going to be a really fun series. UWF is now 11-13 and 13 overall, 5-9 and nine in conference play. And the Argos visit Spring Hill on Wednesday for a doubleheader this week before hosting Montevallo for a weekend series. That starts on Friday. The seventh-ranked UWF men's tennis team continues to roll. The Argos picked up three wins last week, beating sixth-ranked Columbus State 4-3, then knocking off number 13, Washita Baptist, a clean sweep 7-0 in that match. And the men capped off a perfect week with a 6-1 win over Xavier out of Louisiana on Saturday. The Argos are now 12-2 on the season. They are 5-1 in conference play. The UWF women's tennis team picked up two solid wins last week, downing Columbus State 4-3 before turning around for a 6-1 victory over Xavier. The Argo women now 9-7 overall with a 4-2 mark in the conference. Yeah, we've been ha having a great uh, couple weeks at home. It's always good to get back at home and uh, play on the courts we're familiar with. And I think our teams are really starting to gel, both teams. Uh, the men's team's coming along, won some big matches, and then the women's team, you know, we got a young team, so they've had a lot to learn. Early stages of the season, I think it's all kind of kicking in now. Uh, both teams, you know, firing on all cylinders. Our doubles is good on both, and then we're carrying that over to singles, and, you know, a lot of the matches are close, but we're ended up uh, ending up to win a lot of those tight three-setters or tight two-set matches, uh, where at the beginning of the season, you know, we were kind of losing a lot of those. Um, so it comes with maturity, and I think, on both sides, our players are playing with a little more confidence and a little more maturity. Can't say enough about our seniors. I think ours have really stepped up and really showing some leadership, uh, bringing the younger guys along and younger girls along this year. So, uh, yeah, we've got a tough weekend. We've got, uh, you know, uh, West Georgia on Friday and then Mississippi College, who's got a good program on both the men's and women's side uh, on Saturday. That kind of ends our homestand. But then we got to get on the road early Sunday morning um, and go to Auburn, Montgomery, uh, and play two tough teams there. So really a tough weekend, three matches in a row, and uh, really will be, uh, you know, our final Final uh, front, uh, we have one more match the following weekend before conference against Valdosta State. So uh, four tough matches left, and hopefully we can end the season on winning notes. The women host West Georgia for a match on Friday this week. Both teams bring Mississippi College to the tennis complex on Saturday for the final home matches of the season. Both men's and women's golf are going to be playing at home in the coming week. The men will host their version of the Argo Invitational at the Pensacola Country Club. The women, they will be at Tiger Point and Gulf Breeze for their version of the Argo Invite. For the women's team, it will also be an opportunity to educate people on a medical condition that is close to the heart of this Argo squad. UWF freshman golfer Millie Thompson is good. She's really good. She's from the UK. She comes from a great family. She's funny. She's a great teammate. Oh yeah, Millie also has alopecia. You know, I started recruiting her a little bit. I had no idea about her condition. Uh, my first phone call with her, her opening line was, coach, just wanna be open with you. I have alopecia, but it's not gonna stand in the way for me going on the LPGA tour. Alopecia areata is a rare condition that causes a progressive loss of hair. Millie was diagnosed in 2019 and she was not shy about sharing that diagnosis during the recruiting process. That was all I needed to hear. I thought, man, what a what an incredible honor to like work with someone that has faced, you know, has to face something like this in their life and 
you know, they definitely are going to have some perseverance and I'd love to have them play for UWF. I kind of decided pretty quickly uh, on coming to West Florida when I'd spoken to the coach. I had a couple of Zoom meetings with the coach and she she really made me feel like I was already part of the team, even though I hadn't even signed yet. Millie Thompson knew she had found a home with Coach Kristen Dorsey and the UWF women's golf team, but she had to wait. The UK went into lockdown during the COVID pandemic. That lockdown may have been a blessing in disguise. We're a close family. Um, and with Millie and, and the development of our alopecia, I think it was nice to be around in the early stages um, so we could show her the support she needed to, uh, to muster on and, and take strength from us. I think COVID kind of helped in a way where with my alopecia and my kind of like the timing of my diagnosis because the majority of like the awkward hair stage or like the weird hair length was when I was in the comfort of my own home. Millie eventually made it to Pensacola this year and wasted no time becoming a key part of the program. But it hasn't always been easy. Far away from home, in a foreign country, dealing with an advancing medical condition. Yeah, alopecia's, alopecia's tough, right? Um, it's tough for any parent. Uh, there's no, unfortunately, there's no medicine. And there's no real treatment that anybody knows anything about. So I guess that's one of the reasons why I've come this week. Um, so I can show her that, you know, she has people back home who are thinking about her. Her hair has fallen out during this first year in Florida. That's a tough situation for anyone to deal with, but Millie is making the most of it. I think that's really important to me, the, the raising awareness thing, because not a lot of people know that much about alopecia. Her condition has become a teaching tool a way to educate others on alopecia. It's nice to kind of shed light on it and make people understand that it's, you know, it's not a bad thing or it's not something that you can't ask. And I've been super open about it ever since the start of when I've had it. And like, I'm happy if any of the girls ever ask me a question or if anybody's like, oh, how's it going, you know? And I think that with bringing more awareness to that, I think it, kind of makes it less of a taboo subject, not just for me, but for everybody else around me, which definitely helps me with uh, the confidence aspect of it. The team has rallied around Millie. Their support has been vital. They helped set up a recent visit from her dad, Spencer, at a tournament, bringing a much needed transatlantic family reunion. It's brilliant. I mean, it was a surprise. I didn't know the coach and um, a couple of the girls knew. They kind of did it behind my back and, it was probably one of the best things that could have happened at the time. I really needed it, so it was really nice. The Argos are having a tremendous spring season. They will host the Argonaut Invitational April 3rd and 4th at Tiger Point in Gulf Breeze. And it's more than just a tournament. It's a chance to spread the word on alopecia yeah. and another opportunity to show their love for a teammate. The girls have really rallied around and embraced, um, you know, her condition and We've, you know, we've been working with the team as far as making sure that we just make um, alopecia a relevant conversation. So when we're out playing with our playing partners and they're like, oh, you have somebody on your team that doesn't have hair. Yeah, she has alopecia and she's normal. She's funny and um, you go get to know her. Also, here's a little ribbon for you. Like we just want to make it relevant and the team has really rallied around her. And I think you can see it in her face reactions with hanging out with the team, she'd do anything for them too. My college experience so far has been made a lot of fun by the girls and by the coach and by the whole environment because I think it can be quite daunting moving away so far away from home and you don't know what you're going to expect and I think it's helped a lot being with a team like this. They're so supportive. I couldn't have asked for, for a better set of people. 
Both the men's and women's Argonaut Invitationals tee off starting April 3rd at their respective sites. And that is a look at all that we've got going on for this edition of Argo Sports Insider. Don't forget, GoArgos.com is your online home for all things UWF athletics. Check out the latest news and notes, schedules, rosters, and tons of other good stuff. You can also follow us with the Argo Armada app on your phone or tablet, and you can find those in the Apple or Google app stores. And we are all over social media. Don't forget to follow and engage with your favorite Argo teams. We'll see you next time, and as always, Go Argos!